just waiting a bit. Okay, um, I hope, um, normally I have the tendency to move a little bit around or something, so don't, don't worry about it if you just miss me, yeah? So, okay, I missed about a bit of the time. Let's see if everything works up. Okay, um, what do you expect here at the moment? Um, this is part of my personal web flow, yeah? And it's a little bit chaos, so some of it will be live. No, actually, I recorded most of this stuff, so <laughs> you wouldn't have that painful experience, something not working or there's an update right at the moment uh, to save your sanity. Um, and first of all, my workflow was not perfect. Yeah. So m most probably you have implemented some ideas which are far cleverer than mine, uh, but I hope once in a while there will be something useful for you. So that's about what you can expect. Yeah, so just relax and we're all gonna die. Um, <laughs> so basically, what shall we do? So build some Gromo website, okay. Install the user, usual suspects, JCE, Akiba backup, uh, whatever you prefer. Um, and also make the website load a little faster. Yeah. I'm sorry for Windows users. This is majorly about uh, my Mac development workflow. Um, but some of the tools can be also used uh, for Windows. And also some, I can name also some alternatives for Windows user. Uh, took some time for me um, and everybody told me, oh, why don't you develop with a Mac? And I said, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, I, I've got my big servers there and um, no, I changed. And there are a lot of things that makes life a li little easier, as especially as a web developer. So, not required, but it can be useful. So, a thing that I really like is an Alfred app plus Power Tools and it helps you to make automated workflows. Um, for example, something which I uh, like to do uh, is start, stop all development apps. So uh, I all the time I uh, found myself, I uh, did always the same movements. Fire up local web server, uh, start browser, uh, start up EDE, um, also additional text editor, then stuff like this. And I always did it the same thing. And I s started uh, recognizing what, when I just start my work, it takes me about four minutes until I'm ready. And so I thought, okay, maybe it's, it's, uh, it's getting a little easier. So, no. Mm -mm. Doesn't the video start? Okay, just just see. And some it starts the video on auto and some not. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That, that's a, that's a pity, but doesn't it start? Lief die Animation? Okay, normally it should start. Uh, just ah, okay. So I just put in space. Uh, I started my own development apps, and then magic happens. Windows appear on the screen. And the nice thing is, uh, these are the windows I, uh, I also need. <laughs> so I got my browser, I got my sublime text, code kit, PHP storm, mempro server. So, and also when my wife says, please come, food is ready, I just have got 
one automated workflow and everything just shuts down. It's nice and convenient. So um, how to do that? With the Power Tools and Alfred, there are certain ways how you can set that. So you can have a short key, you have here like a uh, keyword description, I'll put there a small icon there. And then there I've just got multiple files and, and multiple programs or apps to be run. And now I got also the same with quitting. And as you see, I can here also run scripts. But it'll be looking a little bit more like that. Like tell application Firefox to quit, etc. And then they just close down and that's it. But it, which is also very cool, you can import workflows. And for example, which I really like, um, open folder and sublime text. So I open up as um, sublime text already with the appropriate folder I want to work on, which has all the files there. So as kind of file explorer on the left hand side. And um, does anybody of you use Font Awesome? Yeah? Okay, then you most probably like the um, workflow for the Font Awesome. Okay. Obviously, not. I do not see the animations on the screen here that I have, so, so I just have to turn around and watch it. So now I got here everything opened up, I got all my files. I can navigate it, open them. That's really nice, just, just by default. Yeah, I just have to um, download the workflow and then just um, make a shortcut and then, then start typing and it just gets going. So Font Awesome is one of the web fonts I really like. They're it's really nice especially if you're using uh, Bootstrap because it's fully implementable. So what we do here at the moment, there we have a um, class here. And what is it? How does it look like? Um, mm, oh wait, I do not know. So you, you look up in the list or look up in the web directory uh, what that icon actually is. So what I do right now, I see now, okay, it's, it's, it's an unhappy smiley. So uh, I want to have the other smile, yeah? Or something else. So I just can scroll down what is at my disposal. And when I find something that I liked, I just take that, hit enter, and it's there. This is Alfred doing all this work. Yep, it's a workflow for Alfred. So, okay, just delete that and that's my smiley. And that's really convenient way. Basically, if you do not <coughs> know it totally by heart, but a lot of things. And so there's also uh, the workflow for that. And if I take a look at it, um, okay, I'm out, yeah? But there are other people who wrote that cool script and I use it, I'm really thankful that they made that. Makes my life easier. Um, next thing, uh, uh, Sublime Text. Uh, nice text editor. And what I really fell in love with is send coding, emit coding. So what is it? It's a way of writing HTML and CSS in a very quick, very productive way. It has a disadvantage. You have to be able to think in HTML. If you can do this and know what you'll be doing, then there's a far, far faster way of writing code or HTML. So you got to think first and then code. So for example, I'll just take this here or this, highlight it, and it all evolves to code. So as you see, some of the things are getting really complicated. Um, just, just, just to show 
uh, the more advanced you are, it's, it's a little bit like a meditation. Yeah, You just focus on something, what you do, think about it, write a short line, and then it'll just blows up to the whole normal source code. Um, something which I really often use is um, I get some word or email formatations and I just want to have very, very plain, basic HTML, uh, nothing special, nothing fancy. So um, I get the normal code and I just want to make it in HTML. So right, I highlight that. Then at the very bottom here, I change it to a headline, and you see here it's changed. Now I want to have paragraphs here over time. So I just highlight the whole thing. And right at the moment, I say here, P, and an asterisk, which makes all of it paragraphs. And it's a very convenient way. And this is one I like, it's just a way of making the navigation. I say UL, so now please all in LI, and I want to have here a uh, um, reference link. And now I got my smart mini navigation ready. I'm sorry, Brandon, uh, I don't usually use the blind bit. Is that a plugin? Uh, there, there's also, um, you can use the Emmet coding also for other um, text editors. Um, there's a plugin for um, Notepad++. There's also, a, I, I think, nearly every advanced editor at the moment has one or other way how to implement that. Emmet coding or send coding. I, actually, I, I actually, I like the, the term send coding better, but it's not used anymore. It's more Emmet coding at the moment. Um, it's only for HTML, that. So, but but for for me, it speeds up a lot of things, especially as you can just be very sure that there's no funny stuff in there. I mean, you can also uh, configure <coughs> the JCE editor to delete, for example, um, word formatting. Yeah, I mean, everybody here should have at least one time the experience that some secretary just copy and pasted from Word and then she's wondering uh, why in the website looks to completely different and stuff like this. And um, you get the call and uh, somebody blames you for all that <coughs> stu unnecessary stuff which is in there. So, but for a lot of time it makes life easier. Um, the next thing, um, MemPro, uh, it's, it's, it's nice for setting up development um, environment on your local machine. So uh, I do not like to develop on a, on, a, on a real life server, I develop on a local machine. Uh, most of the time it works fa faster and if I screw something up nobody sees it. And for, for Windows users, uh, MEMP has also and uh, now I, thi I think a beta version out for Windows. It's, it's, it's I, th I think it's called WAMP. And um, also there's another way uh, you can use XAMP. But um, I think uh, the MEMP family has some very cool advantages because um, it's kind of easier to use and you can change some parameters for your liking. So for the moment, here I got here all my local Joomla installations. Here I can set the folder. I can see where the files are. And if I hit on that button, I can also go, it opens directly up in the browser. Yeah? So very nice, convenient way of handling things. I could also set it to, to, to another directory if I want to try something out like a quick and dirty test, A, B or something, then that'll do the trick. Oh, I got a notice there. So, what can I do? Uh, okay, okay, uh, I, was, I was thinking more of a quick and dirty way, not fi fixing it really. 
So it makes me able to, to, to show you how you can implement a few things. So I just go on PHP and I say, okay, disable errors, warning. Uh, okay, not disable errors, but the warnings notice. And I can change my PHP versions just to test something. Does it run on an old PHP version? Doesn't it? Uh, will my code break if I update the PHP versions? And that's that's really handy and convenient way of doing it. Yeah? I know uh, so, some of you guys who are just can do that manually, um, but for me, as 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 a say intermediate geek, this is very nice. So uh, we go a little bit into the preparation stuff. So basic Jumbo 3 installation. Um, I really like from Phil Joestrap as a template, um, which a lot of times I use as a, um, say, base foundation for a couple of stuff um, that I do on my own just to, to, to improve beyond that. So I um, have a couple of things that I change because um, normally it's been used, it's been using um, less and I like more uh, bootstrap thus. But this is a personal thing. Um, yeah, and I use uh, PHP Storm for editing the files. We'll we get to that later. So, I got my template folder. And here, as you can see, here I got all my uh, ZS bootstrap stuff. So fonts, JavaScripts, ZAS style sheets. Okay, PHP Storm. It's also available on Win, Windows. And uh, for me, this is just, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a killer. It's, it's really cool. It works fast. It's, it's easy to set up. Uh, I tried it with uh, NetBeans, um, Eclipse, and okay, I could be working on it, but it it's was not really intuitive. Uh, I had trouble setting up the workspaces. And PHP Storm is far easier to, to, to get it running, and it works very fast, and uh, the performance is really good. Um, also, if, if you're a developer for open source project, it's free. You can, if, if you prove to them, oh, I'm developing for an open source project, you get the license. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, okay, working speed is cool, it's fast. Um, it helps you with code suggestions and also small documentation. And there's a lot of things you can configure for your likings and there are a lot of plugins to be used with it. So even if it's something not doing out of the box, most probably there's a plugin out that does it. Um, you can use external libraries like Joomla Framework or Joomla Libraries which is very nice because I just want to, uh, do not have a whole Joomla project folder there. I just want to use a template. So what I actually do, I just use a template folder for editing and tail PHP storm. Oh, please also include for the syntax, the external folders from Joomla, libraries, includes, etc. So, as you see here, external libraries, PHP, and now I have here the normal Joomla stuff that'll be included. So, this actually makes your life easier. So, if I start doing now some code, um, okay, this is just a general example right at the moment. T uh, take up the index file, I just create a variable. But this is what most normal PHP. So this case gives me the normal PHP stuff. Yeah, if I start writing, it just tries to autocomplete. Um, so I just use some get variables. And later on, 
I can easily use that variable again. So it makes it e really easy to, 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 to cope with it. I do, you do not have to remember everything on your head, uh, which is for a forgettable person like me, uh, very nice. Yeah, just as I grew older, I tend to forget things. And <laughs> so you see, there it is. So just suggested me my variables that I declared earlier. And if, if you're working on a larger project, that's a really time saver. That's really nice uh, because uh, you cannot also make a mistake. With the, um, you cannot make a typo. Uh, you misspell a variable, and some sometimes really bad happens. Yeah? So the next thing uh, for SAS integration, a browser refresh. I really love CodeKit. CodeKit does a really good job. Basically, um, it watches the folder. And which I set just to the template folder. And okay, for short interruption, um, um, please raise your hands. Um, does anybody of you know Zas or Less? Yeah, most people. Okay. Um, what actually does it's 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 a way of uh, using programming syntax for style sheets. So I can use variables, I can use uh, methods or functions in declaring style sheets, which makes life a lot easier. If the, if the, the customer says, oh, but I would like to have um, everything which is green, I would like to have it in red, it's really, really easy to accomplish because you can set the color for fonts or so on to a variable and you just change that variable and you change it for the whole project. Then you say, please compile. And what happens, uh, you get an output of one single CSS file. Hmm? Yep. So function with variables, um, OK, functionality is tested. And also, it's improved over, um, over the time, especially with ZAS. Um, you've got also kinds of um, things like rounded corners or so on, the style sheets. And a lot of browsers, they want to have it presented in a certain way. They do not take the base syntax, which uh, style sheets normally would offer. And that'll be taken care of of SAS. It does it automatically then. I do not have to worry about it. Uh, I cursed myself because um, I, I did that manually. I wrote um, nice PHP classes that would do that. And about one month later, I discovered that there's something like ZAS out. Um, I was still happy because it still st it saved me time. And it's m maintained by a lot of people, uh, which makes it easier for everyone to use it and to be more stable and more productive than if I would do it always on my own. Mm. OK, um, you can make big changes <coughs> faster for the whole website. Um, and it's really worth the learning curve. There's a learning curve, but it's not too harsh. And it really overall improves the speed of your development. It's a personal pref preference. And um, if I would be developing on a live server, then I most probably would go for less. But I'm not doing it. I'm always testing, developing on a um, local machine, on a local server. And then I got some advantages that I just prefer. So if you you've launched the site and then you want to change the app, you change it on your local server. Test it. Test it and then upload it. Um, I also do that because um, I change the file names. You see, later on, I got here um, my, uh, my bootstrap.css as a file, which has been compiled all the files into. So I do not have 25 different uh, CSS files. I just got one CSS file, which greatly reduces the HTTP request and therefore the performance and the speed of your site. And what I always do then is also I, p I, p I put a timestamp to the name of the CSS file. 
just to make sure that if somebody got a cached file and with the server settings I have, um, they would normally not get the latest CSS file. They may be using some CSS file which has expired two years ago. And for that reason, uh, I also do, I, I do test it on a local server. Then I put a, a timestamp to, to the file name and then I upload it to the file server and said, now take the new file. And that'll take care of a lot of stuff. Um, so what do you see here right now at the moment? I tell them to take all these separate files here, grid tables, forms, and so on, and just take that, import it, and merge it into one single CSS file. And if I do not need something like buttons, forms, or so on, I just could comment that out, and I got even shorter CSS files. So I can use you now variables in CSS. And this is PHP Storm and it sh shows me also if they indicate a color here, it shows me on the side which color it has, which is very neat. So I just can go there. Right. Yep. You are adding in the provided bootstrap files, aren't you? Um, no, this are uh, my personal I, I, I took them from GitHub. Uh, the tw uh, Twitter says uh, bootstrap files, mm -hmm. and I implemented them. Okay, yeah, and then you're editing that one. Yeah. So, but, but just take the one that you prefer. Huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'll load the CSS to my template. Just It loads one CSS file, as you see here. Follow CSS, my bootstrap CSS, that's it. Um, now we come to CodeKit, which helps me to put it all together, which is very, very nice and handy because I can set an output folder or output path. I should say, please take that file and create it there where I want to have it. So I can have a folder with all of the fancy development stuff and I just got a very, very small folder that will be actually be used at the website. Which is something I like. Oh! <coughs> and it also tells me when there's a new file and it had been created. So, and there it is. So I got the, all the comments in there and I can also say, please make it compressed, no comments and so on. And then I got a very tiny file which also reduce loading time. Yeah? For development, this is very nice. You can see, okay, for debugging purposes, uh, crashes there, does not really work there, which file causes it. Um, just log it, up and then you're done. Um, but for productive person uh, th reasons, then just say, I want to make it as short as possible, so compress it and <laughs> ship it. And, which I really love, you can do this also with JavaScript files. So I got now my query, bootstrap, uh, scroll, top, JS, and so on, and I c tell CodeKit, please take these files and compress them into one single JavaScript file. So uh, that way you can also use HTTP requests if you're using on most of the pages always the same JavaScript files. Th then there's no need to load them separately. If you use them on all pages, <coughs> for example, always the five same JavaScript files, put it into one file, minify it, and then just use that. So you got fewer HTTP, HTTP requests, which means also faster loading time and higher performance. So we are nearly there now, just see how we put it all together. Um, this is something I really like. So this is a normal folder, and I can set also a browser refresh. Huh? So if I put that on, then CodeKit starts an own web server, which does the refreshing. And it's clickable, it's browsable, so it just behaves like a normal web server. 
to your to the mempro which already runs in the background. So they are dependent on each other. Um, so you see here workflow dot local and then the port um, 8888 that's a mempro server and this one is a uh, code kit server here and that's the one I'll be using um, also I advise you you can set up a domain um, endings do not for, for example do not use DE or something it's better to use local because sometimes um, if you really use the actually top-level domain that it'll be using, it can have strange behavior sometimes, especially if you try to update things. And so I really advise you just use a uh, um, different domain ending name like local for the local development stuff and then your regular server. Mm. By the way, don't use your head because that ending head tag is required for CodeKit to inject the browser refresh. So otherwise, it can happen that you do not get the browser refresh running, though everything is loaded properly. Because CodeKit needs that to inject the new uh, refreshed style sheets or JavaScripts. And thanks to David Jordan, who helped me finding that fix. <laughs> so now actually you see here what the moment we're going to do. We've got uh, different browsers to, to test. If you wonder, because there's no Internet Explorer, first I use a Mac. And I really think, um, or I'm, I'm the opinion, that the Internet Explorer is not a browser. <laughs> so <laughs> we can argue about that later. So actually what I'm doing here, I just take a color picker and I said, oh, I want to change the background color. I want to make it something more lighter, freshing. So I take uh, some yellow. Huh? I save it. <gasps> Magic. So if you're using also two monitors, it's so nice. It just work on the big screen, just save, look a bit to the right. Say change, say oh, what great guy I am! I am. <laughs> uh, so and it makes it really easy. And you see also, um, I changed the font color, and I just use a color picker. Just take it, and it's easier to play around. And also, if I decide how things behave and how do the colors work, and you just go there in the browser, click, 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 and it's all there, and it's um, it fully functional. So. I just want to say thank you. Well, it's nothing special. Try to be nice to people. Avoid eating fat <laughs> food. <laughs> really, really good book. Now and then. Uh, get some work in. And try to live together in peace and harmony with people all of creeds and nations. So, Monty Python. So, um, I'm open for questions. And uh, before you ask for the links, there they are. <laughs> so, I hope you could take some with you that you could use with your daily life and performance and um, yeah and um, that's about it I'm open for questions <laughs> no questions all right please That's what this means. And and yeah, yeah, so it's okay. And <laughs> um, I also, also think uh, PHP Storm is not really expensive. License for for a really helpful development tool is uh, very low, or re uh, relatively low. Mm, yeah, but you can do both. You can you can you can buy it and contribute. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't really a presentation, but I, I can find it. 
Oh, you have you you have um, that you have to look up because um, that changes sometimes um, because um, there's a site uh, from the Alfred app and the Power Tools app, and they are under constant development. So they got tons of useful workflows out there, and that's the reason why I did not really put a link there. If if you can use Alfred, and um, then you can just go on the main project page and also go into the forums and see what they have there. Then uh, the workflows stuff and bring it here to you. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, also, um, Al the Alfred app itself is free, but to make really use of it, you have to buy the power pack. Yeah, so the, the app of the power pack is um, not too expensive, but do not hit me. I do not know the price at the moment. Can you get it to use with other tech services like I use Tech Train a lot? Yes. And uh, you could talk right into Alfred. Um, you you sh you, sh you, sh um, if you if you're into it, go to the website of the Alfred app, mm -hmm. and then uh, look if there's uh, uh, for Text Wrangler. Uh, text yeah, it, uh, if if there's a workflow for it. Uh, most most probably there's something out. I just found ama amazing stuff there for my research. Normally, I just wanted to uh, show you how I use it to, to start on my, my development apps. Then I was looking a bit into the workflows and I was just spending there half a day. <gasps> wow, that's all possible and oh, that's cool. And I just took my two highlights out. <laughs> uh, so how much time do we have left? Are we about... Uh, Two minutes? Okay, then i just uh, say thank you. Thank you for your patience. And yeah, have a nice day. Bye. Thank you.